Okay, everybody. Uh, sorry for the, uh, the Halloween -y lighting situation. <laughs> That's really not Hollywood. <laughs> oh, okay. So I left off the last end of the last video, um, addressing, you know, letting, you know, letting be known what I think and feel about the, uh, the whole idea that ADHD, ADHD is really a gift. It's a mental disorder that, you know, that glitches up my neurology all day long. And it's just such a gift. Uh, well, if this is a gift, uh, please show me to the returns counter because I would like a full refund and the part of my brain that organizes all my activity uh, and organizes a good deal of my cognition and al would allow me to align my, my action with my will a lot more often with a lot greater ease, I would really like to make an exchange. Um, I'll say that. Uh, and, and very soon, this is going to be the last video. I know a lot of people, um, you know, they see the, the, <laughs> the marathons that I put up of series and they just go right to the end. So uh, I want to make sure that what I will end up with is um, a, a brief description, brief rundown of the going theory as to what ADHD is, what the nature of it is as an executive functioning deficit disorder. Uh, I'll leave you with that. And uh, we'll see. I think I need to do a whole new channel, actually, about all this stuff. So, um, but I want to give you some sort of information, you know, like to leave it with um, about what it, I've been talking a lot about what it isn't and so on. But like, what is it? I want to at least begin to address that. All right. Another one I got all the time, and I know that we generally do get all the time, is the very, very well-meaning, but I, I think very cotton-headed and like oh, pretty much meaningless. Um, what's normal anyway? Uh, I can't fail to notice that usually when someone's asking that question, they are very obviously not, nor not normal at all. Or there's someone who feels it's very mama bear, super protective of someone who is clearly not normal. Now, those of you who've seen anything of me or my life or my channel or my sensibilities, please know that uh, by saying that I, I pretty much everything I, I hold dearest and that I love the most and I think is the most worthwhile and interesting and uh, uh, makes life worth living is not normal. <laughs> okay, so when I say that, I don't mean that within a negative. I don't mean it in a negative way. I really don't. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's way more than the spice of life. What is not normal? What is not normal? And as for this, it's like, well, what's normal anyway? I, I just find that to be just an, just intellectually so lazy that I just, it, it bugs me. It bugs me in a lot of ways. Um, because what we mean by nor you know, what we mean by normal is statistically normal. And then the next series of arguments is, well, you can move the goalposts wherever you want. You can like make something out to be all kinds of things, blah, blah, blah. Well, look at me go and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll change the, the, I'll change the statistical outcome if I move these variables around. And I'm like, it's not that I, I don't think that you can do that or that that's not true or that that's not a good point to make in different, all kinds of contexts where things are really overdetermined. But I mean, what we mean by normal here is when you are, I mean, some of the stories we have, okay, like ADHD people out there, like, please, let's be honest, all right, of the adults. Um, there are situations that we get into when our symptoms are not being managed um, that you just, come on, all right, like, just come on, come on, come on, come on. Like the, the for want of a nail stories that are just so outrageous that I mean, and and really, do you want people? You know, like, do you do you, do you want people to believe that 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 you chose that for yourself? Really, really. Ugh. Anyways, um, that's for another time. My other channel, a whole other series of things. Um. Yeah, yeah. We're, a lot of us are very lovable. And we're very interesting. We're very, you know, we're pretty. We're we're effervescent you know a lot of us or and we certainly have some cool ideas and we're uh one thing that's nice that goes with this disorder quite often is that um adhd people are uncommonly you know they're reported on i mean the, 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 the doctors talk about us like this this is a thing uh, that we're uncommonly warm-hearted and we're um sorry i was just thinking of eric strauss for a second and i was like yeah what about that anyway uh, <laughs> um but yeah, we're, we're, this is true. This holds true. Um, I think for any ADHD person I've ever encountered, part of the, part of the neurological problem here, one of the executive functions that is not working 
up to the level that you would expect and that you would have if you were neurotypical is one that inhibits your behavior. You are not as inhibited as most people. You don't have as much of a filter. Um, you do not modulate expression of things the way most, the way neurotypical people do. Um, not as, or not as often as they do, as consistently as they do to the same degree that they do. It's one of those variables is, is, is odd. Let's put it that way. It's odd. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's unwanted all the time. It certainly doesn't mean it's a terrible thing all the time. There are some, there are all kinds of, I mean, again, I, it, it's hard to even begin to estimate. For example, uh, what proportion of people who are stand-up comics who make us laugh so hard um, and point out things that nobody else sees all the time? Like, it's, I don't think it's possible to, to overestimate what proportion of that population has ADHD. But so again, there, there are beautiful things that, that come out of it, for sure, for sure. But uh, there's a lot of it makes life a lot harder. And I think that that is a fact. You know, I mean, unless you're, you're living a life where you don't ever have to do anything in a certain way at a certain time, in a certain order, uh, for a certain length of time, you know, if you're living a life like that, then bully for you. Like, how can I get onto your island? You know, please, where's the, where's the ferry? Because in that case, yeah, ADHD is just awesome. And you know, it's just wonderful. <laughs> again. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all right, so rundown then. So what is ADHD? ADHD is a uh, developmental delay, neurologically based, um, performance disorder, mental, mental illness, that is, is that. Um, performance disorder, the nature of performance disorder, I'll get into this way more in another series, but uh, what that means is very important to know actually, it's key to understanding, is that ADHD people know all the same things that their peers know. Peers in the sense of every statistical uh, category that you can think of, okay? They, we know the same things as those people who have the same intelligence level, the same background, the same culture, the same you know uh, education, the same blah, 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 blah. On and on the list goes. We know the same things that they do. The other thing is that while emotional dysregulation is a core symptom. It's one of the, it's part of one of the, it's, it's an outgrowth, I guess you could say, of one of the executive functions, or the collection of them actually, not working properly. Um, and that was a core symptom of the disorder up until the DSM-3, whereupon it was dropped because, ooh, scientists are like, ooh, feelings. Like, you know, it's, it, they couldn't come to a, a good, close enough consensus uh, at that point for that, for the addition four and TR and, and five to um, include emotional dysregulation as part of it. But it's, they're, again, the, the leaders in the field are like, oh man, what a mistake that was. Like what a terrible mistake that was because it, of course, you know, it's, as, you know, as you could put it, do you, if, the, if there's, if the disorder, if the deficits, the cognitive deficits are such in ADHD that your executive functioning isn't working, that is all the highest order parts of the brain, brain functioning that act, are executive, you know, think of the woman or the man at the desk who's like prioritizing, ordering things, saying, no, we're going to defer attention on this because it's not as important. We're going to focus on this until it's done. We're going to persist in the task. We're going to self-motivate using our foresight and our hindsight and our, um, and, uh, good, you know, good access to mental play that is afforded by nonverbal and verbal working memory. All of these things are disrupted in ADHD, all of those abilities. Um, and here we go. I just completely forgot what the hell I was talking about, even though my blood sugar is up where it should be. And I took some of my medication a little while ago. So, I mean, this is, it's not, it's not what I, you know, would I choose this? Would I seriously, you know? Oh my God. All right. So as I was saying, <laughs> uh, emotional dysregulation is a, is a core part of having ADHD, but you will not find it in the DSM, uh, five. And a lot of people who are leading experts in the field find that very, very unfortunate because it definitely is part of the picture because how you think affects how you feel, um, or, and it affects, you know, how that goes down the expression of those feelings. And that's really where the action is. That's where, where the, the, uh, abnormality is with ADHD when it shows itself, which is not all the time. 
because as with all the other symptoms of ADHD, it's part of it that, again, another factor for it being so, you know, towards it being so misunderstood and misperceived and overlooked or uh, all the problems associated with recognizing it for what it is properly is that it is variable. The symptoms vary in a pretty unpredictable way. Um, and there are the, the sort of strength of the symptoms is different for different people in different situations. Uh, what remains constant, however, and validates the thing as a disorder is that it causes disorder and that there, there is a, you know, there is a reporting and an obs observations can be made of these dysfunctions in action. You know, they're there. It's just that, and, and they're happening more often, more of the time, with greater severity. Um, in people with ADHD than they are with the neurotypicals. That's how that is. And it is a distinct pattern, distinct from other disorders and other problems. Uh, anyway, sorry, back to the emotional dysregulation thing. So the point there was that uh, people with ADHD, we know the same things that other people know that we have a, a lot of other things in common with, and we're feeling the same thing. This is, it's really important to say this. This is not, ADHD is not a mood disorder. Uh, the kinds of feelings that we're having are the kinds of, that are context specific. They are appropriate kind of feelings to have for the given situation. They're the kind of feelings that anyone would probably have, you know, or would be, could very likely have in a given situation. Um, what is abnormal in ADHD is that we have, a, again, a shaky, eh, not always working, not always working very well. Um, ability to inhibit our behavior and to modulate um, the executive functions of the brain. So what that may mean then is that the expression of the emotion that is of normal emotion, um, again, yeah, normal, uh, that is what is not normal. That is what is, is strange and can be a real problem. Um, for, it can make a lot of problems for us. It can be some social costs that are very high. One person in a documentary about it that I saw was really great. Um, it was by the totally ADD guy, Rick Green, and his, I can't remember who else made this documentary with him, but about ADHD. Uh, and he said, um, you know, the, the, the difference between uh, uh, someone with ADHD and someone without ADHD, let's say in a boardroom situation where everyone's having a very long, very tedious, awful meeting, and everybody around the table is thinking, oh God, when is this going to be over? And they're like thinking about what they're going to do later that night. And they're, you know, their attention's all over everywhere, but on the actual droning voice of some windbag uh, boss that's there who everybody hates, okay? <laughs> it's a given situation. Everybody at that table is like, oh God, when can we leave, you know, and feeling, and just feeling like, like choking that guy. What makes the ADHD person at the table different, they're thinking the same thing, they're feeling the same thing, but what makes it different is that they're the most, like, not that they will, but they are the most likely to have poor impulse control and to actually enact what they're thinking, which is, you know, like to leap across the table and to ah, grab the person. Um, you know, in very, very, very severe cases where the person doesn't have and probably has a bunch of other, you know, um, mental problems going on or whatever, that's what can happen. And then you go to jail, right? You have no, you know, you've had that no impulse control mixing with a bunch of other stuff. Bad scene, bad scene. So there's that. So it's a performance disorder. It's not about skill. It's not about knowledge. It's not about us. Um, uh, if we just learned how to organize ourselves better and pace ourselves better, uh, then we would do better. No, not true. Um, what will help us, thank God there are a lot of things that will help us and help us a whole lot, will help our performance, which is where the problems are, um, is our sort of behavioral modification strategies and, and, and use of all different kinds of tools and reminders and just all kinds of whatever works for us to help us remember things and stay on track and to use men special mental sort of invocation of certain things to sort of remind us. We, we need to be, we need to remember to remember. That's a, that's an ADHD problem. I, again, it's not that only ADHD people, ADHD people could have this problem, but that's a big problem for us. Um, is that we don't remember to remember. We don't remember to remember the future. We don't remember, we don't stop and think before we say something or before we act. Um, and 
you know, and do we do that all the time? Are we all like a total disaster all the time? No, but we do it more often than neurotypical people do. And we, you know, this executive function deficit theory really does account for that stuff. It's, it really does. I, I don't know. I don't see any holes in it so far based on what I've learned. And I've learned a lot about it. The whole disorder. So, yeah. So I, I actually did give a rundown um, in my spontaneous way. Uh, I gave a rundown of what uh, the main executive functions that are affected um, by ADHD uh, and what happens is this, we, we the etiology, like the, the etiology of the disorder itself is, um, there seems to be a genetic or an epigenetic component to it. Uh, it's very, very, um, her hereditary, uh, or it's, there's a strong, I should say there's a heritable, um, a very strong heritability associated with the disorder. So if you have a sibling who has it, or you have a parent who has it, or you have a, a first degree relative who has it you are at a much greater, uh, the, the, the uh, likelihood that you too will have it is, is very much increased. Um, and that's another reason too why it gets misperceived and, and overlooked and whatever is that very often people will, will not recognize that um, their degree of impulse control or whatever is, is abnormal. Um, statistically speaking only, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean that that's always bad, but it's not what neurotypical, it's not at the same rates, it's at, you know, rates and measure, you know, uh, quantifiable um, patterns that for, as it is for neurotypical people as a group. Uh, and a lot of people make the objection, well, you know, they don't very often, here's, here's something that clinicians see all the time, okay, is that a child gets diagnosed with ADHD and then the parents come in for a meeting so that the, the clinician or counselor or educator can explain, you know, it's a clinician usually, who can explain to them, okay, this is what it means. You know, we've, we found this out about your kid and these are the implications and this is what we, we suggest you do and da, 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 da. And this is how most, you know, this is the most common way for adults to find out about their own ADHD is when they come in for such a meeting about their kid. And then when the whole syndrome is, is described to them and, and what the features are, they're saying to themselves, you know, at least one of the parents, if not both, is sitting there going, like doing this and they're like, Oh, that's not normal. That's, oh, oh, I thought, oh, I thought everybody just does everything at the last minute and is late all the time and uh, blurts things out and interrupts people when they don't really mean to and forgets stuff, uh, you know, doesn't transfer things from short-term working memory into long-term memory storage uh, properly. And, you know, like they just think, oh, I'm just like my old man, you know, which they probably are because they're old, you know, they're down had it as well. And probably like the vast majority of adults also did not get assessed or diagnosed or help or anything. So, <sighs> all right. So just one last look at the, uh, the, exec the executive functions in this theory that are affected adversely by HD. And again, you start to see the, you know, what makes it a disorder is that the level and frequency and severity of the impairments associated with these neurological functions are, um, they're high, they're high. And, and, and this is the crucial part for those that are worried that this is going to be misused all over the place. The crucial thing is if for it to be a disorder, it needs to be causing harms to that person, harms and losses and pain and heartache and suffering and loss of sense of well being and loss of uh, opportunities and loss of achievement and, you know, inability to achieve commensurate with, um, with potential for that particular person, uh, given the givens of the rest of their talents and abilities and circumstances. Um, that stuff is not working right. It's not, it's not, a, it's not good <laughs> what's happening for that person. Um, that's what makes it ADHD. Um, all right, so back to the executive functions, what they are. So, you know, what, here are some of the things that go with the executive functions I spontaneously did the rundown of. Um, things like self-motivation, intrinsic self-motivation. That is very, very difficult, if not impossible for ADHD, depending on the person and the circumstance, for ADHD people to generate to a normal level, uh, you know, at the normal frequency and for them to keep it going for the, for the normal length of time that you would want to keep it going to deal with uh, tasks that are less than scintillating. When tasks are scintillating, this is where you see a performance variability. 
uh, when tasks are scintillating, what's happening is it's, it's setting off a bunch of neuro, um, neurotransmitter effects in the parts of the brain that are kind of in effect cause better communication to be happening between all the parts of the brain that are, are, are interacting to achieve executive functioning. And um, so we can, you know, there are many, many tasks and, and things that we can do um, if we find them interesting or we find them like they give us an adrenaline rush, which is what psychostimulants do as well. If we have that kind of correction happening endocrinologically, then you can find we can we can perform quite well. We might be able to perform just as well as anybody else and, and often. But the, the, the thing that makes it abnormal is that we need an intervention to make that happen. It's not happening on its own. The, the dopamine and norepinephrine in our brains is not, uh, it, it's being, we have too many re reuptake um, receptor, or receptors that are sucking it up before it, you know, before they can do their job up there and connecting different parts of the brain and relaying messages between the neurons. Oh, it's just, it's not working right. So what else? Another thing I forgot to mention that's associated with those executive functions that are uh, impaired um, with people with ADHD is a sense of time. Most of us don't have any. We don't have an internal clock. We don't feel. And this is the most, one of the most philosophically interesting aspects of ADHD. I'm, I'm a few years after diagnosis. I'm still sitting with this one because it, the implications are quite, you know, for someone who's you know, creative thinking, big picture thinking, the implications are really... They could be profound, for, you know, for extenuations of any of the impairments, but this one is really like, wow, you know, that one, that I'm not experiencing time. I do not feel time the way a neurotypical person does, you know. Um, so that's part of the reason we, 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 we lose track of time. We're just, almost all of our problems as people with ADHD, unmanaged ADHD have to do with time management. Uh, they have to do with being able to marshal one's resources and attention and focus and persistence and self-motivation towards a goal in the medium to long-term future that would benefit us or that is absolutely necessary to survival in some cases is to marshal the cognitive executive level resources to consistently pursue and obtain um, achievement of, of goals big and small that lead to uh, you know, some sort of, you know, as much assurance of our future well-being as one can have, you know, in life that is uncertain. That's what's not going right with us. Okay. I will definitely have to be doing a uh, other series at other, uh, maybe I, I, I'm going to do another channel. That's what I'm going to do. But I, that should give you, I think, you know, if, if you had the, <laughs> if you had the patience, uh, to follow that anyway, the last part at least, um, I hope that you know uh, a little something more about ADHD and, you know, if you've been struggling along with having a really hard time just getting it together in ways that are very easy, you notice are very easy for a lot of other people and, and plenty of people who may not be nearly as bright as you are in a bunch of ways, but yet you are struggling with like the easy things of life you know, remembering to buy the milk, you know, stuff like that is just constantly getting you down. Um, then you would know, you know, something, what it's like to have ADHD. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.